Welcome to Point of View. I'm Grant Mangan. Yes, it's another new subdivision that's popped up post-quake, but no, we're not in Christchurch. Developments like this have been popping up all around the Greater Christchurch area. One of those areas is the Selwyn District, no more so than in Rolston, which has seen its population literally explode. Today, our guest on the show is the Mayor of the Selwyn District, Kelvin Coe. Today I'm going to find out from him just how the district's coping with all its new residents. Mr Mayor, what are the top priorities for your council for 2014? Well, they're really a continuation of the policies we've had over the previous years. And the first one we have at the moment would be the district-wide strategy, because we recognise the effort that's gone into planning in what we call the urban development uh, strategy areas, which is the ones closer to Christchurch. But we're also seeing the effects of growth on our more rural townships, so we're needing to make sure we have the zoning right and the infrastructure right so that we don't impede development in those areas. So that would be the first one. The second uh, one, and this is not necessarily in order of priority, but these are the list. Uh, we have the Rolleston Town Centre Master Plan, uh, which we're currently working with and consulting with the community, and that's looking at where's Rolleston going to be in 10 years' time, do we have the commercial zoning right, where do we go from here, and we also, in conjunction that, we have the Foster Park Recreation, which goes side by side with that because they're all part of the Rolleston picture. Uh, outside of that, we have uh, several rural areas. We have um, Green Park, Lakeside, Dunsandal, who all lost their halls in the earthquake, and so those communities are now going through the process of how do we, what do we replace them with and when and how. And then we have some supporting uh, facilities in West Melton and Whedons which are being upgraded with, to represent the growth in those areas as well. And they're all local initiatives that we're supporting. And well, as well as that, I think we have a representational review coming up this coming year, which we need to be thinking about prior to the next election. So we'll make a start on that this year. And of course, when we get our annual budget out of the way this year, we've got our next 10-year plan, which again is thinking into the future and where we're going to be. So it's obviously going to be a very busy year for the uh, Selwyn District uh, Council. I want to take you back a, a moment just to ask a bit about the issues that the Selwyn District faced um, after the 2010 and 2011 earthquakes. Were they the same issues that Christchurch City and Waimakariri District faced? In, in terms of our people, they were very similar because we had a similar proportion of houses that were damaged in the earthquake. But we, the difference was we didn't have the red zones, although we have some houses on that damaged were on TC3 land, but they were able to relocate on their own section, so it didn't mean we lost a whole lot of areas. But uh, in terms of council infrastructure, we were more fortunate in that we did lose some of our sewage system in Rolleston, and we did have damage to roads and, and uh, bridge abutments sank, and so there were a lot of little repairs like that, but we didn't suffer the same massive council infrastructure losses or damage that you saw in Christchurch and Waimakariri. The population statistics indicate that um, since the earthquakes there's been a great exodus of people from Christchurch City into the Selwyn District. Is that trend continuing? It is still continuing at the moment. In fact, we've seen the most rapid, if you like, growth in the last six months, and it'll be interesting to see whether that continues at that rate in the next six months, but there's every indication that it will at the moment, but it's obviously going to change at some time. What impact is all that growth having on towns like Rolston and um, Lincoln, for example? Well, you're seeing a lot of development, a lot of new subdivisions going around in Lincoln and uh, Prebleton and Rolleston and West Melton. But as I mentioned, it's also rippling out into our more rural areas and rural townships. We're seeing subdivisions out there as well. We've also been, over the years, last few years, uh, looking at the recreational opportunities. So we had the completion of the Lincoln Events Centre. We've got a Lincoln Library due for to be opened in the next few weeks. Uh, we've opened the uh, Rolleston uh, the Selwyn Aquatic Centre at Rolleston, the new pool system there, but we also along with that implemented an aquatic strategy that supported all the rural pools and community pools we have as well. So we've been, and as I mentioned, Foster Park Recreational, we're looking at, and West Melton and Weddens, we're looking at recreational facilities there to complement the, the growing growth in the population as well. Sounds as though you've got a lot of plans to accommodate the demands and the needs of the new residents moving in. Are you concerned though that with this great influx of people that um, some of the, the charm or the rural character of the district and its townships could 
change significantly as a result of all the growth? Yeah, we, we're certainly seeing a change in, in the townships, particularly the bigger ones closer to Christchurch, but um, that's not necessarily bad because it's allowing us to provide more facilities. You're seeing more shops come out, uh, better recreational facilities, and things like doctors, schools are all being upgraded. So, so there's, a, there's a plus side to all that as, as, as well. So how successfully are these new residents integrating into the existing Selwyn communities? I think there'll be a whole range there, but I've heard a lot of good stories about people integrating. We have a newcomers group at Rolleston and one is currently being set up out at Leeston. And so there is there's a lot of sports clubs, recreational clubs, cultural clubs in these areas, and if people want to uh, move into those or get involved with those, they, they quickly assimilate. But, but there's also the risk that we'll just be a dormitory and people will continue their activities in Christchurch. And I would expect in the first instance a lot of people will do that. They've left their friends behind, their contacts, their business contacts, their social contacts, possibly still in Christchurch, although many of them may have come out here with them. But over time I would expect to see them uh, assimilate into our local communities. Uh, we have a community development program which is helping run different programs to help people assimilate into the communities as well. I don't think there is a, uh, as you phrase it, a conflict in demands if you like, because all the rural communities need service centres, need, need rural towns to base to get their activities and supply the services that they need. And uh, just if I use the aquatic centre in, in, in Rolleston as an example, um, a lot of the people going there are coming from the rural area and they've never had this opportunity before of a you know, heated pool all year round. And in fact, while there was some diversion of opinion as to the, to the, the, the wisdom of that decision some years ago, uh, now I find people saying to me, look, I oppose the establishment of that pool, but now I've been there and used it and I think you guys made the right decision. So that's the rural community uh, endorsing the, 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 the better servicing that we're able to provide with this population growth and the more, more better rural or better urban facilities. One of the easiest ways for people to assume it is, is if in fact they are working in the district yeah. as well. Are there a lot of work opportunities for people who are moving out to Selwyn? There are increasing work opportunities out here. Uh, we've seen in recent years the development of the Sinlay and, and, and Fonterra factories at Dunsandal and Darfield, which has put work opportunities in those more rural areas. But we've also had the iZone Park development here, and that's been a, a real success story. We've seen a lot of growth in that since the earthquake and the recent announcement by the Port of Tauranga that they're going to build an inland port there. And when that happens, that will be another shot in the arm and stimulus for iZone as well. So in the past we were about 50-50 employment in Selwyn and, and people working in Christchurch. I think before the earthquakes we were getting up to 60% employment in Selwyn, uh, but I suspect with the rapid growth that's being diluted now and we're probably back to 50-50 or even less working in Selwyn now. But with iZone growing, we hope to change that. What are some of the economic benefits of the iZone for the Selwyn district? For us it increases our rating base and, and also you remember for a community to be viable you need what I call a three-legged stool. You need good work opportunities, good housing opportunities and good recreational opportunities and we're trying to get the balance between those three lines. Good design guides for our, for our um, subdivision, urban subdivision, work opportunities and I zone is the highlight there but there's also work opportunities coming in other districts as well so you know we while we we focus tend to everyone tends to focus on I zone we do support businesses in other parts of the community as well so, so yes get that get that balance right live work and play and I think you have a really attractive community um, one of the things that can detract from that attractive community of course is traffic and traffic congestion um, I was told once that every new household generates around eight vehicle movements a day. Well, you've got hundreds if not thousands of new households popping up here and so on. How much of a concern is it for your council to manage all that growth and transport and traffic? Well, we recognise following the earthquakes that we would be under some pressure in terms of growth. 
and we have already moved to upgrade one an alternative route in from Rolleston into Christchurch, uh, which is Selwyn Road, uh, Shands Road, and that is involved. Uh, and this will happen in other roads as well. As we as we see the traffic volumes increase, we'll need to respond with things like seal widening, left turning bays, right turning bays, and of course the big thing for Rolleston and in this part uh, here in the central part is the motorway. When stage three is finished and we get a four lane, you know, grade separated motorway coming right out almost to the door steps of Rolleston, that's certainly going to improve the transport uh, opportunities here. Public transport also is an expectation that many suburbanites have, is that, is that there will be that option. There are public transport services um, to many of the towns in, in the um, Selwyn district. Are there enough, and is that an area which is going to have to be improved? We, we, ha we have, I think, relatively, I use that word wisely, relatively good facility, bus transport into Rolleston. It goes to, uh, and, and out into Lincoln, Prebleton Lincoln area. And we have a cross one that goes from Burnham, Rolleston to Lincoln that links those townships together. It's a bit of a chicken and egg. If you don't have the service, you don't encourage the patronage to it. But if you don't have enough patronage, you lose your service. So, so, so hopefully we're going to be able to build on those, those uh, as time goes by. And of course, the more population we have here, uh, the, the higher the more likely we are to have a sustainable transport numbers or passenger numbers on those 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 routes. Um, there is always the request for services out to Darfield and perhaps out to Leeston and Southbridge out that way as well. And so that has been a continuing request over the years. It has been trialled at times, but the patronage hasn't allowed it to be sustained. So we hope that one day we'll be able to get back there as well. If um, demand for public transport grows, might that lead to the introduction of, of um, passenger train services or rail cars, given that places like Darfield and Kirwi and Rolston obviously are sitting on main trunk railway lines? Yeah. So the infrastructure is, is already there. Yeah, that, that's a, a possibility that's been raised many times. But to my understanding, we don't yet have the in, sufficient density or, or volume you know, of quite population, don't have enough population yet to be able to justify that. And the other, th other point is that there is, where does it discharge people in Christchurch? Uh, if we were going back to the old central railway station and you could have sort of orbiting buses out of there, that probably might be a good service. But at the moment you still have the dilemma of where do you get off in the middle of town or in town. And I think buses are far more versatile in that as, as respect at the moment. How are you juggling the conflicting demands of the new urban residents with the existing rural community? I, I don't think there is a, a, as you phrase it, a conflict in demands, if you like, because all the rural communities need service centres, need, need rural towns to base to get their activities and supply the services that they need. And uh, just if I use the aquatic centre in, in, in Rolleston as an example, um, a lot of the people going there are coming from the rural area. And they've never had this opportunity before of a you know, heated pool all year round. And in fact, while there was some diversion of opinion as to the, to the, the, the wisdom of that decision some years ago, uh, now I find people saying to me, look, I oppose the establishment of that pool, but now I've been there and used it and I think you guys made the right decision. So that's the rural community uh, endorsing the, 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 the better servicing that we're able to provide with this population growth and the more or better rural or better urban facilities. I'm interested to hear that. So you're saying that in fact there's not necessarily a kind of new urban, old rural split within the Selwyn district despite the rapid population growth and change. There is, there is a changing um, philosophy or modus operandi, if you like, and that if you look at the Lincoln Events Centre, which replaced a, a, a town hall in, in Lincoln, uh, we've gone, and as the population grows, we're going from having uh, facilities manned and operated by volunteers to having professional staff running them. And that's what's happened at the Lincoln Event Centre. So we still now have, so if you like, we have the older rural areas still running on the volunteer system, and that's working very well, and we have to be real grateful for all the people, the volunteers, that put their hands up and, and, and deliver those programs and that. But in, in the uh, in the in an event, and if you look at the Lincoln Event Centre, the Rolleston Recreation Centre, and the Aquatic Centre at, at Rolleston now all run on a professional basis, and that's just reflecting the increased demand and 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 the variety of services and and uh, things that are available in those facilities. 
and my own personal view is that we need to get back to fully elected councillors, but I think there is a case for a transition. You've had the commissioners doing a grand job for the last few years, and I would like to think that we could still utilise their skills and, and the knowledge that they've built up uh, when a new council comes in, but of course that's dependent on the existing commissioners accepting a reappointment for a further term. Water quality is clearly a, a big issue for both rural and um, urban communities. How is your council dealing with issues of water quality? Well, I think that's largely being addressed through the Canterbury Water Management Strategy, and we have a Sell My Hora Zonal Committee, uh, which we help service that, and that's basically run by ECAN, but it's uh, pointed jointly between ECAN and, and Selwyn District and Naitahu. So um, that is addressing those issues, and they've just, uh, I think, in the process of uh, putting out their zonal implementation plan, ZIP, zone implementation plan, and uh, that will go out for public consultation if it's uh, very shortly, if it's not there already. And uh, that is looking to address those issues. Now we know there's a lot of finger pointing at the dairy industry, uh, but there is a lot of change going on or, and advocated in the management of dairy farms. But there's also, um, if we come back to it, we have um, the Central Plains Water Scheme. When that comes on, uh, that will be putting uh, Alpine water, which is very low in nitrates, for instance, back into the system and, and feeding it into the irrigation systems, which may or may not have a positive effect uh, on that, but I suspect it will. But that also will uh, be that scheme coming and will also be generating or increasing the wealth of the community as a whole by making irrigation opportunities available for a wider spectrum of farmers. Is that irrigation likely to lead to more dairy conversions and more, more intensive dairying or will there be farmers who actually use the water for um, <laughs> farming other than dairying? The, the first stage of Central Plains was largely replacing groundwater with, with river water on already irrigated dairy farms. But when we get to stages two and three, which are moving into the better soil types, there will be more options available for farmers to, to, to utilise that water. I suspect you will still see a, a number of dairy conversions in that area, but uh, there may also be things like the small seeds, the vegetable seeds, which have quite a high return as well, and there may be more opportunities for specialist crops. You've also got processing crops, processed vegetables, uh, where that's dependent on having irrigation to actually guarantee the yields to keep the factory going, so to make the whole system work. So I think there are opportunities uh, for land use uh, that when, with irrigation, it won't just be dairy. Um, you mentioned before with, with the um, water zoning committees that that was a project that involves um, Environment Canterbury and, and, and Naitahu. Um, what difference has it made to your council to have commissioners at Environment Canterbury over the last three or four years? I, I think it's pretty generally regarded that the commissioners have done a good job there and certainly our relationship with ECAN is great and we get good cooperation there and we're very happy with the situation as it is in terms of the operational side of, of ECAN. I guess you're going to lead on to whether commissioners or elected councillors are a good thing. And, well, I, yes. <laughs> and, um, and my own personal view is that we need to get back to fully elected councillors but I think there is a case for a transition. You've had the commissioners doing a grand job for the last few years and I I would like to think that we could still utilise their skills and, and the knowledge that they've built up uh, when a new council comes in, but of course that's dependent on the existing commissioners accepting a reappointment for a further term. What is your view on the idea of amalgamation? In, in terms of unitary authorities, in some areas where you have a catchment boundary which closely aligns with the district boundary, that makes some sense. In Canterbury where we have uh, district councils, boundaries are basically the major rivers, so you have shared catchments and I think it makes a lot of sense to have an overriding ruling body that manages the water in those sort of circumstances. In terms of amalgamating with Christchurch, uh, if that's uh, what you're thinking here, then um, I personally would not support that. Uh, I think we have separate interests, while we have a lot of interests in common, we do have separate interests and I think we've got the scale now that with all this population growth to actually be a, a very efficient council now and into the future. You don't feel that there's possibly an inevitability that once Auckland's been done, once Wellington's been done, that the blowtorch will be put on, on, on Christchurch and surrounding districts? Well, well, it could be, but we will have to look at that issue when it comes and have to 
go through the analysis of whether it makes sense or not. Um, I think the key thing though is to have good collaboration between the territorial authorities and the likes of Christchurch City and ourselves and ECAN. If we're working well together, sharing services, uh, we're already moving to have joint submissions for instance, so instead of us writing 10 submissions on, for instance, for a piece of legislation, uh, we'll have somebody doing a lead, lead submission and the rest of us will comment on it. So that's, that's working towards more efficiency in the way we operate and we're looking at shared services in other areas as well and if we can achieve that then it takes away a lot of the justification, if you like, for amalgamation. Do you have specific goals as Mayor that you'd like to see achieved in this term? I think if we can handle this, the growth pressures successfully, that will be, that's the first thing. Uh, but you also, when we looked at, we've talked about iZone and we've talked about CPW, and if you're looking for ways to increase the wealth of your community, there are two key projects to deliver better outcomes for your community. And of course the increased rating base, the increased job opportunities, et cetera, all flow through to being able to service and uh, better facilities within your community. Mayor Coe, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. <laughs> So, which one of these will have your name on it? Today we've been listening to the point of view of Selwyn District Mayor Calvin Coe. Until the next time, I'm Grant Mangan. Goodbye.